Diabetes Week is a chance to share stories and spread awareness of what life is really like with the various forms of the condition. And I've been to meet someone who uses the internet to do just that. Laura Taylor creates content online under the name Dia B Queen, where she shares her experience of living with type 1 diabetes. Using our voices online is so important. Using that, uh, the platform that we have to say, this is my story, listen to me. Um, this is what type 1 diabetes is. Let's destigmatize that. Let's talk about what it is. Let's make people aware of what type 1 is. It's such an important thing to do. About five years ago, I started making this online blog and it made such a difference. Um, and I originally was called Diabetes because it was appealing to a teenage audience. And then I realized as I was writing this blog that I wanted to appeal to a broader audience. So I changed it to Diaby Queen because I thought that was a very empowering, sounds a little bit narcissistic. <laughs> it's like, I am Diaby Queen. Um, but it has made such a difference. A community of people online is incredible. It has made such a difference to my own personal type 1 diabetes care. It has opened my eyes to the different possibilities there are and the different treatments there are. So seeing that and just not from a not just from a UK perspective as well, seeing how an international audience respond to type 1 diabetes and the struggles that they have to go through. What is the message that you're trying to spread because um, are, are you trying to bring awareness to the condition? So the message I'm trying to spread is that type 1, <laughs> it is a condition within itself. So there is this massive difficulty with differentiating type 1 to type 2. So type 2 is obviously genetic. It's something that can be diet controlled as well. Whereas type 1, and I know there have been conversations um, about changing type 1 diabetes to have a, a different name so that it's completely separate to type 2 diabetes. And I don't know if that's necessarily the answer because I understand that the two conditions are, you know, they overlap. There's a reason that they're both called diabetes. So I think that's something that needs a bit more of a broader conversation and needs a, a, a higher level of expertise than I can possibly give. But my purpose is to spread awareness and to make people understand what type 1 diabetes is and to make people understand my personal journey with it. And Laura's most recent vehicle for spreading awareness of type 1 diabetes is her soon to be released Diabetes Queen podcast. Hello and welcome to my podcast. My name is Laura aka Diabetes Queen. So my podcast, I have specifically made it so that it's for an international audience. So I don't just want it to be for people within the UK. I have interviewed people from Australia, which is on the other side of the world, um, Switzerland, um, you know, within Europe uh, and America. And I'm expanding that more. I want to understand people's stories from around the world because I think it's important that we have that perspective um, because you can get so isolated, I guess, in your own condition and you can make that very uh, specific to the place that you're in as well. And that's great because it obviously, you know, wherever you are, you have to, to understand your type one according to the, the access to healthcare that you have. But then I also think it's really important to understand other countries and their perspective on type one and the access to healthcare in other countries. And that's something that I want to make people aware of. You've been making this podcast for a little bit now, not super long, but a few weeks. What have you found that it's done? Has it done what you set out to do by spreading that message that type 1 is a condition that people should know more about? I think it has, yes. I think that's something that is so important in the type 1 community is educating others. Not just other type 1s, but people. People within the world, educate them. Let them know what type 1 diabetes is because people don't know. There's such a small percentage of people that are type 1 and they massively generalise about what it is as well. The amount of times that I've spoken to people and they've been like, oh, is it because you ate too much sugar? And I'm like, you, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you do not know what I've been through. You do not understand what type 1 diabetes is. So take that time. And it doesn't have to be confrontational. You don't have to say to someone, you're wrong, and be aggressive about it. Just let them know what type 1 diabetes is. And I think spreading that awareness and spreading that message is so important. And I think it's the best thing that we can do as type 1 diabetics in the community that we have. Uh, and it's so great that social media has developed in the way it has as well, in that we can spread that message more efficiently. So that's the best advice I can give to type 1s.
spread it, spread the message. The topic that you're dealing with, diabetes and type 1 diabetes specifically, is obviously a medical topic, it's a medical condition. So is that a worry when you're saying things that's being recorded that you are potentially you know, giving out medical advice or medical information as someone that isn't a medical professional, that must be a difficult topic to talk about in sort of a public platform. Massively. I think, especially with type 1, it's so specific to the person as well. And I would massively advocate that people understand their own experience with type 1. I can't be the person to say, this is how you treat it. This is what you have to do because it's, that's not the case. Like, personally, I have really poor hypo-awareness, so I go low. Like, the other day, I was 1.5 millimoles, um, and I didn't feel it until I got to that point. And that's really quite low, and I've had it in the past when I was first diagnosed where I got to 0.5. Wow, that's I was still low. conscious, yeah, and wow. I didn't feel it either until I got to that point, and it was really worrying. Um, and I've always led, like, an active lifestyle, and I stayed in my honeymoon phase, which is where you've got your own background insulin for a while. Um, I stayed in that honeymoon phase for a while. And I think, in a sense, I thought, oh, wow, I've got really good type 1 diabetes because I'm staying in this honeymoon phase for a while. But as soon as I started exiting that, I thought, OK, this is actually quite difficult and I need to change up my care. I would never want to say to somebody that they should do something. I wouldn't want to say, have this certain ratio of insulin or like definitely use a pump, definitely use a pen, definitely do this because it's so specific to the person, you can't know. And just because I've had a fairly easy experience with type 1 diabetes up until I started exiting my honeymoon phase, which has only been recently, might I add, and I've been diabetic for type 1 diabetic for almost 10 years. So that's so rare and it's something that I'm learning to cope with myself. But my own personal ambition is just to spread awareness of other people's experiences with type 1. So I want people to understand that there are different stories, that there are different experiences with type 1 diabetes, there is not just one. And I think that that's something that can be fed to us quite easily through clinic appointments sometimes is it can be quite streamlined, you know, do this and you'll be okay. Whereas I think there are other lifestyles, there are other forms of type 1 treatment that suit an individual. You can't just say, do this one thing and you will be okay, you will be really good at managing your type 1 diabetes because that's it's just not, it's not the case. And you're right that it's, it can be quite nerve-wracking to put yourself out there online and say, this is, you know, an experience with type 1 diabetes that I have and this is something that's helped me because I wouldn't want somebody to to look at my own personal experience and to think, I'll do that to make my type 1 diabetes better and then for it ultimately not work for them. I don't want people to think that they have to do one thing to treat their type 1. But then you can't shy away from that because then the content wouldn't get out there and we can't just rely on charities and the NHS to give us everything we need because it's, it's probably not enough. And, you know, hearing anecdotal stories of how you've, for example, coped with your super long honeymoon phase, <laughs> you know, someone else out there could listen to that and they could be going through the same thing. They aren't going to necessarily live by what you've said and, and take your advice. But hearing, just hearing the story and hearing that someone out there is also having a transitional phase and learning to deal with that must be so supportive to the people listening. And that's, I guess, the whole reason for creating a podcast where you talk about these things. Definitely. And I have my own YouTube channel as well, which is, again, just Diaby Queen. And I put this video out a, a while ago about my honeymoon phase um, and I sp I've also spoken openly about the fact that I have had poor hypo awareness and initially when I went to my um, to my consultant about this and said I was 0.5 millimoles and I couldn't feel it that's worrying mm. they said we have never had a patient that has had that before we've never had a patient that has been conscious um, has been conscious while having that sugar level and to me, that was just incredibly isolating. I thought, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that I'm going to have to stay with really poor hypo-awareness for my whole life? Does that mean that I'm never going to be able to 
feel like I'm connected to the type one community because apparently I'm the only one they've experienced. And I went to the Southampton pediatric clinic for a long time and they have a, a you know, quite a, a huge amount of patients with type one diabetes. So the fact that they said to me, we've never seen this before, it worried me. I was really worried about that. But as soon as I, I put it out there to the online community that I had gone through this, the amount of people that responded saying, I too have poor hypo-awareness, um, it was really humbling. It was nice to see that, that I wasn't alone. And that just because I personally had a, a poor hypo-awareness of my type 1 diabetes, that it wasn't a problem. Because I know a lot of the experience I've had with exposure to type 1 diabetes before finding the online community is don't ever have high sugar levels or most type 1 diabetics will have really, really high sugar levels and that's a problem. Whereas I was having the opposite. I was having poor hypo-awareness and there wasn't enough awareness of that while I was going through the initial stages of my diagnosis and it was, it was isolating, it was scary. But seeing that other people online were going through the same thing as me was, it was great. I didn't feel alone with it anymore. That is why it's so important to be sharing our stories like you are this Diabetes Week. So thank you very much, Laura, for talking to us. So Laura is the Diabetes Queen. She's got a podcast coming out very, very soon. She's got a YouTube channel too. So do just go ahead and search for her online and I'm sure you'll find her. But that is it for today's video. Thank you very much, Laura. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's much more diabetes-related content coming out very, very soon.